Hello, and welcome to How to Be a Better DM, a part of Session Zero Studios. My name is Tanner Wayland, and I'm going to help you learn how to have a fun, engaging, and manageable D&D experience while being a DM, or while you're planning to be a DM, right? Uh, and today we're going to talk kind of the final installment for now of our exploration into downtime activities, uh, namely running a business. So, you know, in terms of like the book, why, like, what are the rules for running a business? Because it's kind of meat and potatoes in in the book itself, right? In the core rule book. Uh, essentially, it's just like, hey, running a business is about making money. So if your character doesn't have anything better to do, <laughs> then I guess they can, you know, they can roll a percentile dice. Well, it's it's a D100 plus the amount of days, right, that you're spending. So basically, it's like, oh, I'm spending three days doing it, and I rolled a 91. Or or ninety, and it, it added together it equals you know ninety three. And if that's what you're doing, then oh my goodness, you make so much money. It covers maintenance cost because businesses, according to the rules, cost money to run. Um, but if you roll well enough, and if you spend enough days on it, then you'll actually make a lot of money. So you know, at this point, you're probably like Tanner. Why are we talking about this? Because I feel like that explanation of running a business and the uh, specified goal of running a business, like what it could be a lot better, especially when you're looking at the story of it all. Right. Um, Because as much as, I mean, you probably have been in or plan to be in some campaigns where, you know, uh, the most you plan on giving your characters as far as a reward is just like so much gold you know, and then letting them kind of buy their own magic equipment, their own magic items, do their own stuff, right? And and that's a valid way to play. But when it comes to running a business uh, in a game, like your players, characters starting their own business, it should have an impact on the story and especially that character's story. And I think that that basic description in in the core rules could really be expanded upon and that's that's the goal of today's podcast um so before you know just to preface this uh not every campaign is fit for your characters to run a business and by business i mean like you know they could start a farm they could run an inn they could do a bodyguard service or you know or play the loot out on the town square right whatever it is There are options for characters to kind of, you know, be like the NPCs around them, to run a business, to sell items, things like that. And you're probably thinking, oh, that I couldn't do that if my characters are moving from town to town and dungeon to dungeon. And you'd probably be right, because like I kind of said a second ago, not every campaign is perfect for, you know, a more home steady approach where you know you're setting up shop you're you know getting in with the locals you're kind of building a business or a home or anything like that uh, a lot of campaigns that's not the goal and that's totally fine but if you are in a campaign where your players have a home base or a hometown or a place that they continually go back to you know like a hub so to speak um then this option of giving your players an opportunity to kind of interact with the world as a part of the world rather than just as adventurers, this could be an interesting opportunity for you. And, uh, but it needs to be an opportunity that the players can recognize, right? Uh, because if, if they're going to be doing it, it's going to be extra work. They're going to have to make plans for the business. And if they're not interested then it's really not worth doing, right? And and interest isn't always just about story because you as the DM, you really want to prioritize making a great story. As as players, they aren't always thinking about that. They're thinking about (laughs) min-maxing. They're thinking about, oh, how can I tell my character's personal, you know, how can I expound the background story into, you know, affecting the world around me? And most of the time, that doesn't include like, oh, my character was a fisherman. 
Ergo, oh man, he's always looking for an opportunity to get fish and just, you know, be a fishmonger and sell them on the street. That's not <laughs> probably going to be in the player's forethoughts. So with that in mind, you need to give them an incentive. Sometimes the incentive is just responsibility, right? If they've really spent quite a while working uh, like in a town, maybe they've befriended the governor or the king or something, and they're like, hey, you helped us, you know, slay the pack of gnolls that almost overran the whole town or the granary or whatever. As such, you know, the person who ran the granary, they died and the farm and they ran the local farms as well. Could you take that up as part of your reward? And that's kind of a fun thing. You know, that's a fun way to approach it where you're like, hey, you helped and you you helped with a specific issue. And the commensurate slash applicable reward is something that has to do with that. And it was a business. It was an ownership of something a responsibility. Uh, Some players really love that where, you know, they're not thinking like, oh my goodness, what does this get me specifically? They just love the idea that, you know, before this quest, I owned nothing in town and now I own something. Sometimes that's enough. For other players, you're really going to want to paint a picture and be like, hey, um, this opportunity to buy that empty shop over there or blacksmith, you know, smithy, that's an opportunity for you. And then they're, they could ask questions and you could prompt answers about like, oh, what, what could I get there? And you could be like money, items, connections, whatever, right? Um, chance to, you know, have like make, you know, waves in the world. And you really need to expand their thinking on it. Um, because, you know, for some people, like, I, I, I know I discounted initially the, the rules about like, oh, it's all about gold and how, how much you make and how much time you spend and your role, right? And that's not a bad way to approach it. However, you know, you just want to add on top of that because some players, they really could use that extra gold, especially if you're like, hey, you can make a lot of gold on top, like when you're just not putting your life in danger and it can kind of be, I mean, passive ish income for the players, which will help you buy new items, but you have to do well and you have to put in work for some players that is, you know, right up their alley. They're like, yeah, I just, I really have items I plan on buying and I can't afford it right now. Uh, maybe because you're not putting enough items or treasure in the dungeons, whatever it is, this is a nice way to kind of make up for that. So, so you want to have, you know, you want to give them an opportunity to run a business, but you also want to give them an incentive. That's basically what I'm saying, right? Uh, I think in board games, those are kind of a nice analogy or example of this, right? If you've ever played the super classic board game, uh, Settlers of Catan, there's an incentive to build and expand, right? When you're building a new town or a new city or roads out to a certain place, you're not doing it for kicks and giggles. You're doing it because like, hey, if I build there, I start to get new resources in the surrounding hexes, the surrounding tiles. For anyone who hasn't <laughs> seen the Settlers of Catan, it's, it's a very classic, like, oh, you build a town or a city and then roll dice. And if the number on the, te- the hexes around one of your cities gets, uh, you know, comes up on the dice, you get resources, makes you more rich, helps you win the game. You kind of need to have that incentive in mind, even in D&D for like, hey, if if they're going to run a business, they need to know why it helps them. Uh, and sometimes that's story. It, it, you, you're going to have to know your players and know what really drives them. Um, but what about story incentives? like relationships. Uh, I mentioned the responsibility slash quest reward uh, example. And I think that's an awesome example Uh, to take it even a step further. You know, you could be like, Hey, this NPC that died in your arms, they left a will and you have, you know, your name was listed to take over. Um, You know, they're, Swimming school, that's a, it's a really bad example of a business. But, you know, that's an example of like, hey, 
uh, an NPC that your your player's character had gotten close to died and left an opportunity for them. Um, that's a great option, right? If to like give a story incentive for them to take it over and to make it successful. And, and but if you're going to want to do that, you know, probably set up the dominoes so that they can it makes sense. Like have that character be like, oh, have them introduced early enough that the players can see like, oh, this care this NPC cares deeply about their business and we benefit from their business in certain ways, both story wise and, you know, just getting what our players, our characters need. Uh, and then, you know, when something like that happens, it's easier for the players to be swept up into the story. Right. Um, now I've kind of been talking about incentives and like, Oh, giving your players opportunities for it and, and everything like that. But is, you know, at the back of your mind, you might be thinking, well, I'm already in the middle of a campaign and I haven't even thought about, you know, this. And also aside from that, like what if a player's business like takes up a whole chunk of time, right? What if all the other players are like snore, move on, stop talking about this guy, you know, buying another cow so that he can increase his cheese production or whatever. Right. Uh, because that that could totally happen and it's understandable. And also like sometimes your players are like, Oh, we want to go out and explore. And that isn't always conducive to uh, building a business. So how can you do that? Um, Well, there's a few ways. First off, get other players involved, right? So when, uh, when you're running the business, you want to, uh, I was mentioning that kind of table that you could roll on and see how successful it was. Uh, there's another table, I believe in Sanitar's, uh, guide that like, that kind of revisits it and it focuses specifically on work complications. Uh, and, and basically what it's trying to get you to do is like, think like, Hey, businesses shouldn't just run poorly or smoothly. They should be like, hey, they're they're working well, but something specific happens, right? It shouldn't just be a scale of one to a hundred. How much money did you make or lose? It should be like, hey, did thugs come and demand a protection tax, a tax or something like that, right? Or uh, is the food that you are selling at, at your market stall from the farm that you're running, is there suddenly like an infestation or disease that's going through it? These things should appear uh, not so much that the business becomes a hassle, like a true hassle to deal with, but they should appear from time to time when things are going really well and the players raking in a lot of gold or other benefits. These complications should happen uh, and they should give, you know, the other key, you know, the other characters in the party an opportunity to help yours. Uh, you know, if your character is like, hey, I want to be the best chef ever then a great way to do this would be like, oh, you have a fancy, super fancy noble come in, ask you to cater their party. And then you get the other players involved and be like, hey, you you can't handle this on your own. And you look around and no one can help. Oh my goodness, the other players are going to have to step in. And then it becomes a fun story where they go, you know, some of the players are rolling badly on the the cooking check, the dexterity check. And, you know, others are doing well. And then in the middle of the party, a story beat happens, an attack happens, whatever it is. That's a complication. And it's also something that, you know, allows the other players to be involved. Maybe, you know, one of your players is like a priest and and he's able to, you know, create holy water. In that case, that could be a really interesting thing where it's like, oh, in order for your business running player to cra- to craft a specific item, you need holy water. Oh, this other player has it. Or they have a connection to a bishop or a cardinal who is able to do that kind of spell, right? To create holy water. You just got to be creative and you got to kind of give, you have to have solutions in mind, but give complications that make your player have to think through them. Spoiler alert. We are building an army. That's right. We're building an army of amazing dungeon masters who want to make the world of D&D a better place. 
If you want to join our army and fight by our side against the evil forces of boredom and bad DMing, join our Discord and lend your voice to the cause. Go to sessionzerostudios.com slash discord and join for free today. That's sessionzerostudios.com slash discord and enlist in the fight against boredom. Hey there, listener. Uh, We need your help. We need you to do us a favor. So we are offering, starting today, professional Dungeon Master services for any private or corporate party looking for a Dungeon Master willing to take them on a fun and interesting adventure. And right now, like I said, for the first five people to sign up, it's free. All we ask for is honest feedback and critiques, as well as possibly a review. So if you want to help us out and do this favor for us, go to sessionzerostudios.com slash dungeon dash master dash four dash higher and sign up today. Um, and in case you're, you know, in case you do like to, from time to time, get your players out of the town, going, you know, to other cities, you know, to the coast, whatever it is, um, there are ways to kind of keep this up, right. To keep the running, the business aspect, uh, connected to the player, player character who's running the business, especially if the player's like really into it, like they're really into running the business. There's a few ways you can do this. One. You can have like an NPC who's running the shop for them, who sends them letters every once in a while. And then they have to, you know, come up with solutions, roll (laughs) occasionally like skill checks to come up with solutions to issues the NPC is having. You could also, you know, especially if you kind of pitch this well, the player might be like, oh my goodness, I could branch my business out. I could, you know, when I go to this next city, I could find another NPC and then just little by little, I'm building my, you know, my in empire, you know, becomes Hilton. Uh, but, but, you know, in the fantasy world, uh, and, and I think that that's a great way to do it. Just be like, Hey, there are things that tie you back to the business, even though you're far away. Uh, maybe it's collecting, uh, materials to, you know, for that next big food item that you're adding to the menu or, it's collecting magic components to build something, right? Or to craft something that you're going to sell or that you'll use for your business. So keep that in mind. And as part of that, you know, when they leave, you as a DM and them as, you know, the player character should should discuss goals, right? Like they want to do something, you should be like, oh, you need this specific component, and do you know where you can get that? It's actually around the swamp that you're going. So keep an eye out. Or maybe they have to ask around and that's where they find out that it's in that swamp. So there's a lot of ways to do this. You just kind of want to make sure that that running the business, while not being a hassle, is present in their minds. It's an active part of their group of goals. And it's not a drag to the other players because they benefit in some way or it's a fun kind of outing for them to help uh, your, the other character build their business. Um, Now in terms of like, I've mentioned like, Oh, getting another cow to get cheese and things like that. You're probably like, buddy, that, that sounds like a lot of nitty gritty. I don't, I don't know if I want that. (laughs) And I totally understand that. Because you're in terms of aspects of running a business that you should allow the players or or encourage the players to explore within the game. I mean, there's so many, right? There's marketing, there's product design, creation, uh, there's procurement of ingredients, logo and branding, right? <laughs> uh, making an ad, salesmanship. Any of these things could be a drag or they could be fun. And that's where you kind of need to bring in the NPCs, talk with the player and, you know, probe, see what they're interested in. Right. Imagine if your player is like, they, they bought the shop. They decided like, you know what? I will try and start a business. Um, and then you're like, okay, what's your logo that hangs above the door? You know, that I think for most players would be super fun. It kind of allows their creative 
graphic designery side to come out. And, you know, and if they're ever talking to someone in another town, like the mayor or some, you know, person like some sheriff or something, that's a great opportunity for them to kind of be like, hey, could I, you know, kind of salesmanship uh, and bureaucracy be like, hey, I, I've been looking to set up a shop. What do I need to do? And, and then you kind of give them some steps. Whatever they are kind of open to, you really want to explore that because it kind of is a super fun and unique role playing opportunity to find out like, hey, this barbarian who started, you know, the local dive bar, uh, what does that look like for him? Like, how is he marketing it? Does he even market it? Did you just like throw an axe next to the door and be like, oh, this is called Axe Hut or something like that, right? You kind of want to give them a chance by being like, oh, what's the logo? Uh, Who are you talking to about this? How do you let people know? Uh, Also, do you come up with an ad or jingle? Because that would be hilarious. Uh, If you're throwing these kind of bones, not placing too much like importance on them. Cause it, cause like this is, this is where it can be really fun for a character to run a business is, you know, being kind of silly, being, you know, asking questions that you would ask in a real business, but doing it with this, you know, fantasy character where they can kind of be a little bit crazy, right? That can be really fun and you should not run away from that. You should embrace it. In fact, um, now, I, you know, I've been talking a lot about like the incentives, how to do it, how do you mix it into the the adventure and, and like all that stuff. But I, I kind of want to put another caution out there. Just remember that running business should never be a distractor from the overarching story, right? Sometimes, you know, sometimes those side goals of the characters make the adventure, but you don't want that to be the whole and primary focus of that character, right? You want them to feel mostly tied to the main quest, to beating the, you know, the big bad, to saving the princess, whatever it is. You really want them tied to that, but then you want them to feel like, oh, there's this thing that I carry throughout it, this goal, the side goal of building my business. And that's okay. Like I can work on that. And that's kind of a fun separate task. But but you never want it to become the primary task. So in order to do that, you know, you want you want the business to kind of explore the character of the of the hero and and you don't want it to become the primary goal. Like you don't want to make it so hard to run the business that they're spending more effort there rather than planning next steps in their main quest, right? Uh, so don't make it too difficult. Also, uh, make sure that it that it's not just about the benefits; that it's like also about the character ex- exploration. If you do that, then it's not going to get you. It's not going to feel like a distractor because it's going to shine, you know, shine a light on the character themselves, and and, and not really be like, oh, this this feels like uh, we could have been doing this around a campfire. It just needs to show a different side of the character. Um, now I I think that one of the biggest parts, uh, of, uh, of any kind of endeavor, any kind of downtime activity that I've talked about in the last few episodes that I've done, um, you need to include NPCs and character relationships. I mentioned this earlier in terms of like, oh, the NPC dies, gives you the, the, the in, in their will. That's great, but throughout running a business, make sure that your players run into a lot of interesting NPCs. This is another way that, you know, running a business in the game doesn't, it becomes an addition rather than a distraction, is if you introduce, you know, actual villains or rivals uh, through the business, right? That actually you were planning on doing, but you have a more natural way of doing it now. Um, Maybe you also, you know, the employees that or or the suppliers that the character kind of contacts. A lot of times NPCs in D&D are throwaways where it's like, oh, you meet them once or twice. And then once you finish with the quest, you you never see them again. 
running a business is kind of a, a special opportunity to be like, no, no, I, I came up with these interesting NPCs with, with motivations, bonds, everything, ideals. Uh, I'm going to have these guys stick around for a sec. You know, uh, this isn't the type of villain that you just run into on the road because they're trying to rob you. It's, you know, it's the type of villain that, that you can't do anything to right now because they're just a sucky noble who acts really like rude and pretentious and threatening. Right. But like you can't do anything right now. And that's a cool thing because it means that they're coming back. It means you're going to bump into them more. There's going to be more tension built until it eventually uh, turns into a real full blown conflict conflict. It's the same for, you know, friendly NPCs. Suddenly the person that provides, you know, the metal, like who my, the miner, who's providing metal for your smithy, suddenly there's someone that you run into often. And the wacky voice and personality that you, the DM, came up with, suddenly you're doing that like a lot more often and and you didn't just do all that work for nothing for them to never meet that character again. So really get into that aspect and, and include meaningful NPC relationships as part of that. Um, but I, I've talked a lot about running business and, you know, looking for opportunities to see if your characters are interested in it, but, you know, just know that not every campaign and player is suitable for this, right? Not every party is suitable for this. I, I've already said that. Um, and as much as you can find ways to work around it, sometimes it's just easier not to give them the option in the first place. Uh, because like, Hey, if you have this great, you know, crazy epic uh, campaign where they're not staying in one place or they are staying in one place, but they're going to be plenty busy, then, then you don't need to worry about this, right? You don't need to have this kind of downtime activity uh, on the books for them, right? So, so don't stress too much about it. And, and if, you know, if you suggest it to a player and you get excited, like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have them train knights. You know, they, they showed maybe a little bit of a tendency or, you know, something in their character makes me think this would be a cool fit. And then you present it to the player and, and they're just not into it. Or maybe they're into it initially and it's just not working out. You can obviously change your approach and add more fun NPCs, you know, more incentives, whatever you want. But sometimes it's okay to just be like, you know what? Someone offers to buy it from you or you know, maybe they drop it before they even buy it. And you're like, okay, I tried. They're not interested in running a side business in this game and I'm not going to make them. (laughs) And that's a okay. And they'll have plenty of fun in a lot of other ways. So, so don't stress too much about it. Just look for the opportunity, present the opportunity, incentivize it. And if they grasp it, use running a business to explore you know, the, the world, the character and the relationships around the character, um, and kind of just fill out your adventure. So I I hope that you will, if you're in a campaign that would allow that right now, go for it. Uh, and if you're not think about in the future, you know, maybe your next campaign, it's a little bit more people living like real people while also having adventures, And that would probably give you more space for running a business. Um, But I I hope that you have fun with this. Uh, Feel free to be experimental or play it by the rules. But regardless, let's roll initiative.